Greetings and welcome back. I know it's been quite some time. I just got out of YouTube jail again. Uh, as soon as I had been set free from the YouTube jail, I got another strike because I already had one strike. So I stopped posting because I had two strikes. And it's all on the C19 content, of course. If you talk about anything that really isn't in the mainstream, that kind of leads to a different direction, just like the the crane thing. If you start posting information that's contrary to the narrative, well, then what do YouTube say? We're going to ban you. And so this is basically the life that we're living in now. It's just so overt that they're not even trying to hide it anymore. And so I think it was back in 2021 where I had said that I had done a video talking about inflation, that there was no inflation, that what you're watching is not inflation, but what you're watching is manipulation. And if you were paying attention to what was going on with lumber, when lumber prices were soaring, and it was because while there may have been some shortages, once you understand the goal of the government and what the government is trying to do, then there are individuals who will, in essence, play along with the narrative, right? Just like the news media, when the government was pushing everything about, uh, you know, face coverings and special medications for special purposes, every, everybody else went along, right? All the people who were, you know, like, the, for example, in, in New York, um, the city MD, which is basically like your generic doctor that you can kind of go walk into, they stopped doing walk-in visits for the most part they stopped seeing patients well what did they do they started doing pcr swabs why because that's where the money was they understood the narrative and so they positioned themselves to benefit from the narrative whether people believe that they believed what was going on that it was a life and death and the worst since the 1900s it's irrelevant when you understand what the government is trying to do and if you're in a position to position yourself to benefit you can just like for example uh, the nurses who were working during the, the the worst pandemic since the 1900s and so many of them realized that the money was an opportunity and so people were making money hand over fist doing travel nursing that's why you really didn't see a lot of people talking about it because everybody in essence had their hand in the cookie jar whether you were working as a nurse or a doctor or whatever, everybody was getting money. Uh, it didn't, so why would you spoil the party, right? Why would you be the person who would come into the situation and be like, oh, this is all, you know, medical misinformation, as they say, right? All that narrative. And so in that video that I talked about back in 2021, I said that what you're watching is not inflation, or what you're watching is outright manipulation. Remember back when... They had the gas uh, shortage, right? There was a hack. There was a hack on the gas. And there was no gas from, I believe it was from like Texas, like half of Texas, all the way across to the east, right? All the way coming all the way across to areas like New York. And it lasted for like a day or two, right? But everything in the media, and you saw people going out there with gas cans, people filling up, you know, Tupperware full of gas. The normies all ran out there and created a gas shortage because of the narrative of a gas shortage. And this was, of course, um, revolving around Bitcoin, where they were like, all oh, these hackers wanted Bitcoin to release. And the government was like, we're not going to get involved. And I looked at that situation. I was like, what? And if you actually did a little bit of digging, which I talked about in that video, that gas pipeline is owned by the big company, right? The umbrella company of Coca-Cola. And of course, when you do a little more research, you start to find there are very few companies in America that are just basically owned by one big group or uh, maybe I think it's like six or nine different large corporations that basically own most of all the other companies in America. And so it would be weird for uh, the American government not to get involved with an, what in essence would be considered an act of terrorism where you're basically hacking a gas pipeline under the threat of if you don't pay me in Bitcoin, it was like $5 million or something. And then that narrative quickly came and went. But it successfully created what the government wanted, which was fear. And so if you're paying attention to a lot of the prepper channels on YouTube, the prepper channels are 
having a field day. It's like the people that are always talking about the market is going to collapse, the housing market is going to collapse, the stock market is going to collapse. Like, what's his name? Peter Schiff. Like, day, day after day, video after video, year after year, right? Every time you watch any of these types of channels, it's always fear, doom and gloom, the sky is falling, the world is going to end, cue the meteor, etc. And they're benefiting from what is going on right now because it fits the narrative of what the government wants. And as you can see, this has been happening with oil. It's also been happening with food. And of course, now you're seeing it in particularly with chickens, right? So this was posted um, by Wall Street Silver, and he had made the comment, this is an odd coincidence. 18 U.S. food processing facilities burned down in the last six months with Azor Standard Headquarters burned down just yesterday. And these are some of the posts that were previously created for places like Kellogg's. There was an explosion. There's been explosions uh, revolving around gas facilities, which you can see, I think it was right here, right? This is 2022 explosion, fire, rock, marathon. There's numerous oil refinery explosions, not just in America, but everywhere. And I talked about this in that previous video. If you do a little bit of research and go back to the crisis of uh, 2008, 2007 through 2009, where oil was like 100 and something barrels, like 150 a barrel. When you looked at that time, that's all you saw everywhere all, like multiple places oil refineries blowing up and i did a video talking about that and of course now we're seeing right the narrative with the flu right the bird flu they couldn't they, they didn't get you with the other one so they're going to go this route right and as a result increasing price of poultry and eggs and so the people who are in position, right, they're in a position where they can benefit, right? Tyson Foods shares sets record high as meat prices flatten, as meat prices start to, uh, Tyson Food shares set record high as meat prices flatten profits. But Tyson has had best profits in the past couple of years, all-time highs. Very similar with Kroger. Kroger is another one. Kroger Digital Push to drive 2022 sales, profit higher, shares jump. And if you look at both Tyson, Tyson and Tyson's almost $100 now. I think it's like $98, $99. And of course, if you look at Kroger, and of course, all these companies I'm invested in, just like I invested oil way back when, when the, cri when the crisis came down and I started buying all food-related stocks, which is what I talked about uh, a long time ago on this channel about positioning into food stocks into REITs and things that are typically going to benefit from inflation, like commodities. One of the biggest things that I invested in was in meat processing, flour, grain, fertilizer companies like Mosaic, etc. And if you understand the narrative of what the government is trying to do, if you understand the manipulation, then you can put yourself into position to benefit. Like, for example, all of these prepper channels. And of course, it, it stokes the flames of fear. It, be, it stokes the flames of fear and they say, well, just go out there and buy a little more. Every single one of these prepper channels says the same thing. When you go to a market, instead of buying one can, buy two. Instead of getting one bag of rice, get two. And this just causes an artificial price increase. As people believe that their money is being devalued. And so what they have to do is they have to go out there and they're rushing out and they're purchasing these goods for fear that they will not be there tomorrow, right? Remember what happened with the toilet paper, right? These people lost their minds. And they went up and bought up all the toilet paper and it caused a toilet, a toilet paper shortage. And this is what the normies do. This is what the normies do. And that's why I said, go out there and buy land or get a community, right? And build with the community because then you won't be subject to this stuff. Not because I'm, I'm a prepper and I'm trying to turn you into a prepper and I want you to you know have all the stuff you need for a year and six months worth of food. No, it's because I don't want you to be subject to what the normies do. If you have your own land and you're growing food and you've got chickens and you've got some goats and you've created a business, whatever that business might be, whether you're selling food, maybe you're specializing, you're selling fresh water fish, maybe you're, maybe you're growing herbs and spices and you're selling those and that's your business, whatever it is that you're doing with that land. Now, because you're independent from the system of things, if these normies go out there and buy up all the food, don't really matter. I'll just go out into the backyard 
and I'll pick what I need. I'll have eggs, I have chickens, I'll have some goats, so I have milk. I'll make sure I have a water source. I'm to worry about something goes wrong and these normies do something stupid. But for those who are in business, in the business of benefiting from fear, in the business, especially on YouTube, where you have all of these YouTubers that are spreading fear, they always talk about, you just look at all of their, every one of their, their uh, what do they call it, the, the thumbnails, right? Every single thumbnail, this is it, prepare now, last chance. It's because they're in the business of selling fear. That's all that preppers do. Preppers are in the business of selling fear. And everywhere they look, I mean, you go back to any one of these channels, any one of these prepper channels, just go back a year, go back two years, go back three years. Every one of their videos is, this is it. The storm is coming. Prepare. Armageddon is upon us, right? Cue the meteor. Cue the fire with the Elmo, right? Because this is what they benefit from. This is who they are. And of course, they always have a product. Hit the like button, buy a t-shirt, you know, prepper or whatever it is, discount in the, in the comment section or whatever it is in, in, the, in the information section because this is their business. They're in the business of selling fear. And you are the product. And what they do is they get their money, of course, in the back end from all the AdSense, from the people donating. Oh, thank you for, you know, I'm, I'm prepared. Thank you very much. And then it never comes. People were talking about when... Powell was like going to raise rates for the first time back in March. And everybody was like, this is it. The stock market is going to collapse in March. And then March came and went. And then they're like, April, just look at like any of the financial YouTubers. Just look at their look at their content and month after month. This is when the stock market is going to collapse. Even what's his name? Uh, oh, my God. The Kiyosaki guy. Every one of his every one of his posts on Twitter. This is it. The dollar's going to collapse. Prepare Your money's going to be worthless. I'd rather have a can of tuna than whatever what he was talking gold and silver. This is what they say. This is the narrative. This is what these people do. They are in the business of fear. They're in the business of causing fear within the masses. And this is why I say, don't be a part of it. Don't listen to it. Do not partake in the narrative of the food shortage. It is a man-made crisis for the purpose of stoking fear. And when it doesn't work, then they'll move on to something else, right? Just like the, what was the narrative? Joe Biden was out there. This is going to be a winter of death. And then a week later, they're like, all right, the homies didn't go for it. Let's go in a different direction because it didn't work, right? You don't see any more talk about we're going to mandate this. But then Joe Biden comes out and says we ain't got no more money. And then if they're always it's like just look at what's his name when they're asking the CEO of Pfizer. They're like. Do you think the normies need another dose? He's like, uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, you, you definitely get a fourth dose. And, of course, Fauci's out there talking about the exact same thing. And this is the narrative. It's a narrative of fear. It's for the purpose of creating fear to cause you to make decisions that you wouldn't normally make if you weren't in a fearful, in a fearful mindset. And I don't pay attention to any of this stuff unless it's for the purpose of investing because I know this is what's going to happen. They're going to stoke all the fear. Like It's like, where are all the videos? Right, everybody's got a everybody's got a camera, right? Everybody's got a camera on their phone, and like, where are all these, uh, where are all these videos of the crimes against humanity and war crimes and chemical warfare that are going on out in the crane? I'm like, where's all that? You don't see it. Everybody's got a, everybody's got a camera. You'd be able to see that anywhere, but you can't find it. But you can't find it. It's all narrative. It's all narrative and no substance for the purpose of creating fear. It's not something that you should be a part of. Hopefully this video doesn't get a strike as YouTube is is very much in the loves taken down. A lot of my, the video that I had taken down was from over a year ago. It was like a year and a half ago talking about how Japan said, uh, we're not going to go this route. We're going to go a, a different route that Africa went. And that one got me a strike. And then I got another one for I did a, a video talking about masks. And I went through a whole bunch of um I went through a whole bunch of research, research uh, from like 2015, 17, and 19, prior to all of this, talking about the different efficacies of the different type of masks, and YouTube was like, misinformation. And then I went through, they were like, the CDC, and I, I was like, okay, I'll only use the CDC to disprove the accusations that they were making. And I posted links with all the information directly from the CDC, and I said, show me in my video where... 
my content doesn't align even with what the CDC is saying. And they just hit me back with uh, terms and services. We can't show you where in your video you stated something that was against terms and services, but terms and services. And then they were just like rejected. <laughs> it's just like this is this is the narrative. This is this is this is the world that we unfortunately live in. And so if YouTube isn't pushing back against this narrative, against the, the, the worst you know, pandemic, uh, food shortages, we're all going to die, right? If YouTube is not pushing against this stuff, it's because this is what they want you to listen to. It's because this is what they want you to believe, that this is the reality that you live in. They're trying to create the reality. And when anybody pushes back with real information that's counter to the narrative, it just automatically gets censored. This is where we are. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.